Welcome back to the Floyd Memorial Library podcast, where you'll find information on what's going on on the North Fork of Long Island. We'll be focusing on issues and opportunities going on in the community, as well as people and stories from the present and the past. I'm your host, Christopher Bianchi. And for episode 20, our guest today is Verona Penalba. She is an artist and co-founder of Bay May Studios in Greenport. And we talked to her about her time growing up in Nicaragua and how she got interested in the arts and how she made her way over to Greenport. So I hope you enjoy episode 20 with Verona Penalba. Thank you so much for coming on to the Floyd Memorial Library podcast today. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So I, I'd like to start off with just to, if you could t- tell me a little bit about yourself with a, a little introduction where you were born and raised. Yeah, I'm Verona Peñalba. I am raised in Nicaragua, Central America. So I spent most of my life there and then... Um, after college, I left to pursue my painting, and I went to Italy, where my, one of my grandmas is from, and uh, study painting courses and things. And then from there, I spent the rest of my adult life in different countries, also going back to Nicaragua in certain periods, um, as it always calls me back, and all my family lives there. Mm. Mm-hmm. And how far back does your, in Nicaragua, uh, how far back does your family go there? And then you you mentioned one person from Italy. Yeah, it's hard to say because you know how it branches into so many people. Um, my grandma was just saying, telling me that his great grandfather came from Spain and married a Nicaraguan woman. And from there... I guess that's what she remembers. And on the other side, so Nicaragua has been colonized by Spain. So it's a combination of Spain colonists and the native people. So it's hard to know. We're all a mix of that. So Mm -hmm. we're born from Spain and native. And then my grandfather, who was also a painter, went to Italy as well to study. He also was here in New York. He was in different places, Mexico, Spain. And in in Ro- in Italy, he met my grandmother. Mm. And he was living there. They got married. They had two kids. And with the war, they decided to go back to Nicaragua. So it's one of those things where life takes you different places. Mm. Yeah. And did, did you get to meet any of your grandparents uh my grandparents of my mother's side yes my grandma's still alive and um in our culture at least her she takes a lot of pride of telling you where her who his father was who Mm. his family was if you mention someone they'll tell you it's your cousin because you know four generations back their their grandparents were cousins or something like that so she knows all these branches of families that, mm-hmm. you know, started. It's a very small country, so it was even smaller when she was younger. And so she knows people, the, you know, the family's names, and then they, they spread out. And she can know and remember who is daughter of who and the last names. And I think that's a great ability. I don't, I don't know, but she mm-hmm. loves to... It's kind of like what gives identity, I think, and pride of knowing Mm. where you come from. Is she still in Nicaragua? She's still in Nicaragua, yeah. And then my other grand, the grandfathers on my father's side, he died before I was born. So he was a very um, famous painter in Nicaragua. He died before I was born, but my grandma from Italy, she was still, she was still alive for some time, but she passed away by now, yeah. Mm. And and then what about your, your parents? They grew up in Nicaragua? Yeah. <clears throat> so my whole family grew up in Nicaragua and, and stayed there um, for many reasons. You know, civil wars, 
earthquakes and things like that. A lot of people left, um, but my parents stayed and it was me the one who left to study um, university in Costa Rica, which is our neighboring country. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and um, I did have the feeling to go to Italy because my grandma was Italian and I have Italian passport as well. So I kind of wanted to learn Italian and just know a little bit more of that culture because I had that privilege of, you know, so for me, it was like if I have this advantage, I see it as, you know, someone that can have the richness of two cultures. What it's my time, you know, I was 21 or 22. It's my time to go now that I am don't have responsibilities and I can find a job and things like that. Um, but my the rest of my family stayed and they're all, you know, we, we've they have made their life there. Mm. What did or could you say what they did for work? Your parents did? Yeah, my father is an architect. He's retired, but he still works, you know, on certain projects. And my mother did all type of things. She um, kind of like a business woman in that sense that she worked mm -hmm. in different industries. Um, then she had um, with her sister uh, this when all our all our cousins were little. She had, they designed dresses for little girls, so that was a little side business they had. So my mother is one of eleven children, wow. and my dad is one of nine. So you can think of how much family family reunions are always big. There's always a lot of people, and there is this sense, as I mentioned before, everywhere you go, you find family, you know, everywhere, mm -hmm. because it's so many people, even just first cousins. So every, mm -hmm. every, you can, you, at least I felt that I had always someone to count on, you know, someone mm -hmm. that can be there for me in different areas. Cause you have very older cousins, you have very younger cousins and, um, it's very nice to grow up like that. And where did you grow up? in Nicaragua? Uh, in Managua, the city. Mm -hmm. It's um, kind of like a valley, not on the water, but it's one hour away from the beach, let's say. Mm. So it's very common for for us, in, or I guess people in Managua, to go to the beach every mm -hmm. weekend or go to the lake and always uh, looking for water, always mm -hmm. looking for the water. Um, we have a very big lake called Lake of Nicaragua, and my grandma's family had has, has I guess, a, an island. I don't want to say the whole island, but a, a house in an island, and we would all go there. It takes 30 minutes in a, in a boat to get there, so it's kind of like a little farther away in, the, in this huge lake that you don't see the other side. It's so big, mm -hmm. um, and it's a way to immerse in nature and really feel deep in peace with the trees and the surroundings. So growing up and having that was a, a, a big um, blessing and also going to the beach where, you know, the, the waves and the, the danger and the rocks. <laughs> so that's on the other mm -hmm. side. So we grew up going there and having access to that kind of water side. More in the, the nature, or you did more things in nature as a child, or and then would you go into the city as much, um, or the capital? Yeah, well, the capital. When you say city, I it's kind of like I laugh a little bit because it's <laughs> not really a big city. Is it's very small in terms of infrastructure. Um, in 1972, I know it's so long ago, but it suffered, uh, the original city suffered an earthquake that destroyed the whole city. My parents were, I think, 19 year olds and they had, so my mom's family, imagine my grandma with her 11 kids, they had to move out. So they moved to an, the city next door to to family just to survive because all the houses got destroyed. Mm -hmm. People, some people died, not in my family, but um, the whole city destroyed. So after that, the city kind of grew up organically, disorganized in a disorganized way. So imagine a, a very undeveloped country trying to survive that it's really hard and mm. they do the best they can, but you can see that it's, you know, infrastructurally it's, it's lacking. Mm. Um, development, 
and they do what they can with what they have, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And and then so for you growing up there and going to school there, how was school for you? For me, for me, school was nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. I liked school. Um, I my my parents divorced and my father married a German woman, and so I had half half siblings that are German. Mm -hmm. My siblings, I don't say half. My my brothers are are half German. And so my mom wanted us to know German or not, like mm. know the culture. So we went to a German school and it was um, it was it was nice. I I like a lot the how the schools are there and it's because of the weather. When I came here and uh, I have a daughter who's eight, when I first went to the school, I was a little bit in shock of coming into a building that's all closed. Mm -hmm. and all the classes because it's for the weather i understand that but oh, over there it's always hot mm -hmm. so the classrooms are overlooking the garden outside and when you go out of your classroom there's trees there's gardens there's uh, outdoors yeah. so it's a mix of okay you're in class but you're looking at the outdoors like you have to have the windows open otherwise mm -hmm. you're gonna uh, you know, be so hot and then yeah. you go out and, and breathe the fresh air and it's really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go out in between each class yeah, and it's okay. a very different like way of um, even that little difference for me. I think it's very important, but it's it's the weather. So you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to apply to whatever weather you're growing on. Yes. Yeah. And then you mentioned it's you mentioned it's a German school. Yes. How did that come about in Nicaragua? <laughs> yeah, so I think um, German and French, I guess, governments. I don't know who, oh. who is the one who <laughs> does that, but uh, there was a German and a French school in Nicaragua. And I, I think there's these institutions that want to share their knowledge and mm -hmm. they open these schools. And a lot of kids were, let's say, um, sons and daughters from diplomats and or passing through people that working in embassies things like that um but it wasn't it wasn't it was a private school in the sense that you we had to pay i mean my parents had to pay mm -hmm. but it wasn't the most expensive private school but in nicaragua if if you go to any type of private school you're already in 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 an area of privilege mm -hmm. because education is at least for me a very big um, source of of growth and expansion and you know here is it's I don't know if people give it for granted but everyone can go to school you know the mm -hmm. the public schools are are great in the sense they open their arms to everyone even immigrants you know it's like it's it's huge education and that's why it makes a society move forward um, in a co in a poor country, education is very low. Some people don't, some kids don't even go to school. So to be able to go to school and have extra education influenced by a developed country like Germany, you know, it, it's a great advantage. No, I don't know if advantage, but like, um, yeah, I guess it's advantage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, and then so through school. Were you interested in any certain subjects or and then were you interested in art through middle school, high school? Yeah, art was always the art that they teach in school. And I, I can see that with my daughter is it's very like crafty and, you know, little projects like that. So I always I always loved that. But I saw myself more um, in the way, let's say we had English class and she would have us do, do a journal every week of or us to practice or writing mm -hmm. and I would write within the letters uh, I remember I would create drawings mm -hmm. so I would change my pen so when you look at the page you would see a flower coming mm -hmm. out but it was made of the letters so my way of being creative was more of just infusing color and switching things around and doing creative way to present things not only like oh just paint or more like how can I make this different and more fun and creative? I think that was my approach. And I discovered painting when I was in college. Um, I was living with my cousin in Costa Rica 
and she said let's paint and i never really had painted on canvas like i i don't, I don't remember having painted on canvas before and i was like how do you do what do you do and, and she's like no just just grab the brush and paint I'm like, okay sounds fun <laughs> and what should i paint like i had no like no sense and she's like just look for an image maybe you see it and you wanna you know do the same image or you can come up with something i'm like okay so i was looking through and uh, she had like a university book and there was like this little painting that was like one inch by one inch square and i'm like oh i really like it It was a little boy sleeping on a sofa and i reproduced it in a like a meter and a half square canvas like on the Mm -hmm. floor and I'm still impressed of how good it came. Like it mm-hmm. came so good. Uh, granted, I was kind of copying an image. So mm-hmm. it, it, even it was an image of a painting. So I was copying the way the person had made the paints, but I was so impressed and I was instantly hooked. I was like, oh, this is so fun. Mm-hmm. And I started painting more and more on my own. Um, so I, I did not go to a school for painting or art per se, but I, it's what I call self-thought with just with years painting and discovering things by myself, kind of self-fueling myself to mm-hmm. keep experimenting and finding new ways. Still talking about it mm-hmm. excites me because it's still the same right now. I still get excited when I'm trying something new, when I want to play with things. And it just allows me to spread my creativity with people and with what I'm doing. But that wasn't something you were thinking about when you out of high school, when you went oh, to no. Costa Rica. Not at all. My well, even though I'm telling you I was privileged to be in this school, my mind was I, when I think back, my mind was a little bit closed in the sense back then Internet wasn't really like I remember the last year of high school, they would give us like MSN and, and like. It was like a mm-hmm. very special thing. It was after school. Mm. You have to think like Nicaragua, it's like everything go- arrives there later and very, very little. So technology wasn't quite there. So I didn't know I didn't know there were careers like design and creative things. I had mm-hmm. I really had no idea. I, we went to the universities in Nicaragua and the options were you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a business administrator or dentist, you know, very basic, uh, you know, this is what the society needs. This yeah. is what you can be. And I was like, no, no, f- I, I like the idea of a doctor because it's like, this could be nice to help people. But I'm like, I'm not really a big reader, so I'm not going to be a good student. <laughs> to the, to the... So I was like, what can I do? And the one thing that I could choose was marketing it was kind of mm-hmm. like oh this is something new marketing and it sounded a little creative to me so i'm like i'm gonna go for it but then being in costa rica which is already much more developed in the sense of society um even back then i i saw the university had interior design and graphic design but i was already in my own like i, I felt like i was invested in my career and i was like i'm just gonna finish this and then from there, I'll, I'll, I'll spread my, my wings. Yeah. Mm. But I didn't choose to switch. I, I think I, I was kind of stubborn in the sense like I had chosen this. I have to finish it. <laughs> so. Yes. so you finished that. But then is that when you went over to did you go to Italy after that or were you still? In- so during all that time, I was painting. So in Costa Rica, I started painting by myself and I went back to Nicaragua. And there I I had the idea, okay, let's go to Italy, but Mm -hmm. I have to save. So Mm -hmm. I have to buy my ticket. I have to have a little extra money because it's not like I'm going to arrive. I didn't know Italian. I'm not going to arrive there and have a job right away. Although I was trying to see what are the options. Uh, I have an aunt there who lives there. So I was like, okay, Uh, the plan was I'm going to stay with her a little bit while I'm looking for my job. So I saved money. I actually sold some paintings those were one of the first paintings i sold to invest on my project on my trip so it took me a year and a half um and at the end i sold some paintings i i did my first commission and that's Mm -hmm. when i discovered that i liked painting people commissions and i got my money and then i bought the ticket and i left and Mm. in italy i had a 
I had a job Monday to Friday. So what I, I would do is on Saturdays, I would go to a school where, so it wasn't an official school of art, but it was a teacher who would teach uh, drawing, uh, oil painting, so different courses. So I would go there mm -hmm. Saturdays and then on Sunday I will explore the city of Rome, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for a year and a half. And then I had a very great job offer to go to Miami and the winter was coming and I, I was feeling like my life in Rome wasn't like I needed more friends, more, more weather. So Miami sounded a lot of fun. So I did that switch and I dedicated some time to some years to that career, which is hospitality. And I learned a lot about, I, I learned that I really like it, uh, mm. to make sure that people have a good time, that I really, it really fits me to see people happy. So I did great in that sense. Um, but always painting on the side, always mm -hmm. painting on the side. At some point, years later, I went back to Nicaragua actually for another uh, work and I decided that I wanted to give painting just some time. Mm -hmm. And I had some savings, so as, you know, living there is a little cheaper. So I said, I'm going to live off my savings and and try pay, just try being a professional artist. I say quotes because <laughs> for me, when I say professional artist means that you live off your art, right? Hmm. And not, not everyone can do that all the time. Um, but I, I thought I'd give it a go. And, and what I did is um, painting portraits. And in Nicaragua, that's something that people respond very well. My grandfather did that as well. So he would paint portraits of these ladies. So I did it in, in seeing back, it's kind of nice to know that he did that and I did it as well. In a totally different uh, technique, the technique I do is more of a pop art, uh, very colorful, using colors that are not realistic to the skin or the, um, but I love them and it, people seem to love them too because I managed to be able to sustain my lifestyle in Nicaragua and also um, do what I, I love. So after that was a turning point where I, 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 I knew that I could do it. I knew that I could live off my paintings. I knew that I could um, grow this journey, which is kind of unknown because there's no blueprint. Each artist um or each entrepreneur in the sense of when it's uh when it depends on you there's no way you could say oh let me be like picasso it's impossible you know he it's it's he's his own person that's why his life was like that mm -hmm. um so for me it's the journey of discovering who you are and taking everyday decisions that feel feed your soul and that also support your lifestyle so after that I did a lot of painting, but also um, balanced it out with some work that I got. I say invited because it, it was an opportunity to work in a very nice private hotel. And so I would balance myself working there for a month and then a month off I would paint. And from then on until coming here to Long Island, where uh, Greenport, where I've been living the last eight years with the birth of my daughter. So I stop working for some time but I also painted so I didn't work for anything else just painted and take care of her and it's been my journey here to rediscover um, what is that industry for me here you know not knowing anyone for me Nicaragua in, in one sense was easy because I would do portraits for my cousins and my sisters and and people will see it and then they ask for it and it's kind of like very easy spread out and people know you and get to know you here i felt like nobody knew my work you, it's kind of starting from zero right so all those mm -hmm. years that i had putting my work out there obviously before i did commissions i had been sharing my work and putting it out there without selling but people had a sense oh she she paints etc here is okay let's start from zero and that's mm. where uh, my journey here starts and I'm really happy that now I can do the same. I can live off my creativity with um, our business. I have a business partner, Melissa Gabrielson. We open a, a art studio 
and this is very recent. We opened last year and it's a place where everyone can come and be creative and use different mediums, just like we like to explore. We want people to explore and, and discover how creativity can really awaken something in you very exciting. And it doesn't mean you have to become a professional artist, right? It, it means that you can find creativity within you to see the world around you and give you perspective to to deal with life because life is you know can throw you some really hard corbels and mm -hmm. creativity can help you see it in in a different light mm. yeah but how did you come how did you decide to come to greenport because you were in nicaragua um, um, my husband's work. So he okay. does um, a sport called kite surfing. So it's a very niche sport that only happens where there's wind. Mm. So we lived in Nicaragua. We also lived in Dominican Republic in an area there's a lot of wind. And there we met our friend who owns a water sports company here and back then eight years ago he was just starting so when he met my husband and he knew our type of lifestyle he knew we were traveling around doing this work well he was doing his you know the kite surfing i was doing my painting but when he knew when he met us he said why don't you come and work here a season for kite surfing um and that's because that that was our lifestyle we were saying yes to to opportunities so we we said yes we came here and after the first season he liked it and we came back and then our process of getting a green card and visa it's kind of weaved in between there it was a hard uh, process until two years ago or maybe last year we got our green card so with the um, pandemic it took it took longer than expected and um our friend who owns the companies who helped us navigate the the system and and get this um visa but it, it i think i think life brought us here but it, it was like a very we felt a home in the sense that it's close to the water we both like the water it's a small town and we just felt comfortable i think you don't you don't leave places that you like <laughs> or like <laughs> For me, having my daughter and coming here, it, that sense of discovering new places kind of ceased for me because for the last four years before having her, we were traveling around, uh, including Nicaragua, but we were so three months here for, you know, we were kind of nomads and it, it felt like it's my time to 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 settle. Mm. Um, after you don't have a home for so long, you kind of want a, a little home for a little while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But did you have a, a favorite place you lived before coming to the North Fork? It's hard to know. Um, Nicaragua always has a very big space for me. Every time I had vacations from my, let's say, my previous jobs, I would go there. But it's mainly for the family ties. Mm -hmm. um, I see beauty in nature and it, in all the places I lived. I, I can see the beauty of living mm -hmm. there. Like living in Rome was breathtaking, you know, mm -hmm. being able to see the history and like, I would walk all day just on the streets and do nothing but walk and look up at the buildings and the churches and the, all the institutions. So every place I've lived has beauty, but I think what makes it the difference is the people. So for me, Nicaragua, I would always go back every year. I try to go because my mother is there, my father, my family, my siblings are there. So for me, it's keeping that connection of who I am as a person in the core. It's Latin American. It's being um, connected to family and it, it plays a, a huge place. So I, I've thought about it, like if I didn't live here, where would I choose from all these places? And I, I can't choose. It's mm -hmm. it's really hard because every place is so beautiful. Dominican Republic, it's it's great. Miami, it's, it's maybe the one I wouldn't leave, but I just was there uh, in January <laughs> and I had so much fun. I'm like, I actually could live here maybe because there's so much Latin culture and you I could see myself thriving in the art scene and having and having fun there's so many things to do but it's it's hard to know and to say 
because I, I do appreciate, I'm a person that appreciates beauty. So mm -hmm. I can, I can deny there's beauty here, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, when I came back from my little vacation I just had, I, I came back and it was kind of a, it had just rained and I smelled the fresh air and I was like, this feels home because it's so, it's a special energy that mm -hmm. I've been able to connect to and I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when did you d move to Greenport? So year? eight years ago, so eight 2016, ago. my daughter was born in May and we were here in like June, like a oh, month okay. later. Yeah. Um, obviously there we had to leave to get our visa and things like that. Um, we were like a little back and forth. We moved a little bit, but then this, this was our base. Mm. Yeah. And so while you were here, you continued to paint because you said it was a little bit in the beginning kind of being new to the area and getting used to yeah like a artist base or like people that might be interested in your work yeah uh, um the first I, I think the first year we lived in kochog actually we lived our, our our friends have a kind of like a cottage house that we would rent you know we just got here we we had no money so we were just like mm -hmm. they they graciously rent us their their guest house and i would the work i got back then was still commissions mm -hmm. so people from nicaragua and i still get them it's it's impressive how it, people still have the connection not as before where i would have like four or five a month but now it's like one every every so often but back then i would have commissions and i will send them so i would be painting when the baby's sleeping or things like that and I will send them to Nicaragua via mail or people mm -hmm. travel and I send them to them. So that was my main income and practice. And parallel to that, I started playing with abstract work. So until then I had just been figurative faces, people. I, I really loved celebrating women. So that was like very like, I felt like that was me and that's it. And then once you have, at least for me, once I have my daughter, a lot of things change within me, a lot of portals open, I guess. And I started <laughs> experimenting with abstract and there's where my journey of abstract started slowly developing on to what I do now, which keeps evolving, obviously keeps changing. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I was doing back then. Um, then I moved to Greenport and the North Fork Art Collective. Uh, it was their first year, I think, open when I moved here. And they do, which they still do, and I, I love uh, what Cara does with the collective in that they create this um, community show, she, they call them. And it would be anybody, that, anybody. You didn't have to be a recognized artist to participate. Um, and, um, and they open it, obviously there was a certain, okay, yes, but I guess there was a certain way of applying. I don't remember, but, um, I, I, that was my, my, my first show I was in a little collective, uh, community. So that night, for example, there were, I don't know, 60 people from the community, or I don't even know the number, but that were showing. I, I met, I had a few friends and. I invited my my three friends and we we met other people and that's how I started meeting um, a few of the artists here and then the next year meeting Cara a little long more um, she said do you want to be part of of the members so the members are people that are I guess more dedicated to their practice and they um, you, we would pay the, we would all together pay the rent and work at the collective, you know, being kind of like a, I guess, I, what it is, a collective group of artists who expose their work together. Um, and it was great. That only lasted one year, but it, it helped me um, get to know more people, which is what I needed because I came here not knowing anyone. Uh, so I started to know some people and then that closed and I, open you know i looking for my studio i always kept pushing my work in certain you know uh, ways online i guess and uh, slowly people at least people around me started to get to know my work um 
I had a little studio where Sally first met. I first met Sally, who's the creator of the library. She came in there. It was a little um, garage and I would work there and invite people to come over. So I'm always trying to uh, have connection with people because it's the only way they can see your work in person. It's by showing it. Um, I'm back then or even now I'm not part of many shows here. There's in this not in the North Fork, there's not as many as there are, let's say, in the South Fork or in the city. So you have to make your own path. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be my um, the way my practice has worked um, everywhere I lived. I make my work and I find my ways to show it, it being that putting a show together or things like that. Um, that's had helped me um, expose my work and and as my daughter grow because I dedicated a long time to being a present mother as well. Um, as she grows, I grow. I've been growing my mm -hmm. my time to be able to dedicate to my own practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said you mentioned switching more from the portraits to the abstract mm -hmm. uh, painting. Do you, do you work in any other mediums besides painting? Yeah, well, I do mostly is painting. What I've, I've uh, developed, especially here, but I started it when I lived in Miami. Um, my friend gave me a, a calendar that had photos of Marilyn Monroe, black and white photos. And I think she gave me that because it, it's kind of like pop art, mm -hmm. reminiscing to Andy Warhol, you know, the faces. And that's kind of what I painted. It was very like head, you know, like the head, mm -hmm. the painting. So it, it felt a little pop art. So I think that's why she gave me that. And I had painting left over and I painted on the photos. And it was great. It was fun. And I started doing that every so often that I uh, that I saw a photo, I would paint it or... or um, things like that. And then when I came here, I started going to state sales and and that's why I'm asking of the archives here that I'm seeing all the books, all the old photos that are um, left behind by people that pass away or like history. And now we'll purge them and I started painting them. Now I paint them on, I print them on canvas or larger papers and I paint mm. them. So that has taken um, kind of... Um, a whole branch of my of my creative expression to the point and it developed in the pandemic i remember uh, online meeting a group of um I, was, I didn't know but of course other people are doing the same thing on everywhere in the world where they're using all photographs and they're doing embroidery they are doing collage they're doing all type of things i do what's true to me which is painting bringing color to it and it has been fun because it's something that I do as a, a way of relaxing and having just like a very easy going painting session as it, when I'm painting a bigger painting, it's still fun, but there's a bit of like pausing and like, um, contemplating and really feeling it out. So it's a longer process. Mm -hmm. Painting the photos feels more like let's have fun, you know, mm -hmm. let's just, um, and that's developed into getting opportunities like painting a, a photo, a album cover for a singer, Julia King, who's a, a singer uh, here and other opportunities, which is great for me because it shows you that you don't have to pursue what, you know, things that are out, just pursue what brings you joy. And those things are going to bring you uh, feedback and more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I was curious about, well, living here during COVID, was that an important time for your art practice? Or did you kind of, were you able to work more at that time? Or, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, just kind of, or did it make what you, happened? <laughs> yeah, did it, did it kind of change what you were painting a little bit? Or, um, I that that year, I, I was like, I'm gonna paint whatever whatever it's on my mind because mm -hmm. uh, at some point when you're at least for me you I'm thinking okay I have to do a collection so a collection means they all have to have a thread that unites them and for some artists that 
it's very easy because most of the work have that thread, right? For me, I'm so, I think, so spread out in the sense that things that ignite me that I took that opportunity to be like, I'm going to paint. I remember I painted, I had this and I still have it. So maybe it will, <laughs> it would happen in <laughs> some years, but I want to do a series of women sitting down. I don't know. I, I have this. So I did a painting of a woman and sitting down in a sofa during the pandemic, just to play with that idea. Then I wanted to, I always do the portraits I was doing always with the background solid. That was the, the type of, language I like I like to use I like a solid background and just focus on the portrait well that year I wanted to try what if I do plants on the background and just mm. play around so I, I I used it to play around a lot and the collection of paintings are very one is very different from the other so you wouldn't be able to tie them that well together of course for me yes because I can see my own spirit going through it but it just shows you the different facets of trying different things there's a painting here in the library that i love and i painted during that um that period which is a woman a mother holding her son's hands uh, with a mask and says black lives matter because it all happened at the same time mm -hmm. but the technique i use for that painting it's spray paint spray paint and inks on the figures which is something that i don't normally do so mm -hmm. it was trying new things and for example that painting i look at it i'm like how cool would it be to do a collection of you know 10 mm -hmm. figures on mm -hmm. that same technique um but those are kind of seeds that you know were planted and the one that wanted to, I guess, grow is the abstract. The abstract really, um, especially during the pandemic, I had a, a, a big discovery with my inner self through a therapy that I don't know if you want to talk about it because it's a whole new, a, a whole other side of me <laughs> that I'm very interested in, in, in self-discovery, self-inquiry and creating a, a space of peace and calm um so that allow uh, abstract or really allows me to be in that in that uh frequency where i just feel very in tune with that and it i feel that it translates to people who are witnessing in a way that it it, it makes sense like when mm. i'm maybe what i'm feeling when i'm doing it it's different than what they feeling when they see it but i feel there's something with abstract that people it's more universal in the way they can get recognized with the uh, portraits or the women i was painting it was more divided i would see people that would love it right away and they get very attracted to it but other people would be like who's this woman and had so mm -hmm. many questions like and why did you pay and and i understand the questions but there wasn't um it, it's like another language. For mm -hmm. me, I'm, I'm saying feelings. I'm saying moods through this woman. I'm saying things that maybe uh, there's no words to say, but it's in this feeling of their expression mm -hmm. and what they meant. And that it's a very specific language that not everyone maybe, you know, just like a language, Spanish, English, French. But abstract, there's something more universal about it where it speaks to each more like I don't want to say the soul but it just speaks directly to them in a way that it's more universal so mm. I really like that about it but mainly the sense of freedom that that it gives me when I'm painting it yeah because I can see abstract being more I don't know not I guess people finding their own interest in it whereas other more maybe realistic things they'll say okay that's a portrait of a person yeah. Whereas they might see something of their own that maybe even the artist didn't see exactly. in the abstract painting. Yeah. It, it might be a little more ambiguous, but then it's, I think it's sometimes abstract painting can be even harder to do than just uh, because you have to kind of figure out the composition and everything Yeah. more so. Well, before when I was doing paint, so I painted portraits for like, I don't know, 12 Year, 14 years that's the only thing I did mm -hmm. and I would look at uh, abstract work and I would be like 
how dare they do that? <laughs> how they come out with that and and say it's not, like I I just yeah. didn't understand where they came from. I loved it. Yeah. I, I I was very attracted to it. I love it. But I was like, how they how they decide that's it? How do they come to that? Like so many questions. Mm -hmm. And I I unblocked it, and and that's where I I I think we all have space for growth and expansion. Mm -hmm. And there's times for it. I'm sure with the years to come there's going to be a retract and then expand again mm -hmm. you know it's kind of breathing we go through cycles like that but um at, after having my daughter i must have expanded in a way that i allow myself to play and and don't doesn't matter and there's some abstract work that are less i can see them they're less strong than others mm -hmm. but through the process i can i i am honest with myself and i can say wow this one, I don't plan them as much as, as, as you might think, like the composition. I just let myself flow. And some of them are very striking and some of them are more like peaceful, kind of like a companion, but they're not as strong as, you know. So it's interesting to see where they can go. And I agree with you that they're ambiguous in the sense that they're, as I said, universal, but that doesn't mean it has to connect with me. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you see it and you see a blob of blue, it doesn't awaken anything in you and that's i think that's fair for every work of art it's yeah. going to connect with some people and with others no and that's our human diversity and you also mentioned you talked about it a little bit um is it called veme veme yes veme studios um how did that come about because that did that open last year so Parallel, Melissa is one of my best friends here. We are mm -hmm. like family and we've known each other since I arrived here. So it's one of the first people I met. Um, and about, I, I want to say three years ago, at the end of the pandemic, uh, I did a show in Chronicle Wines, which is a winery here. It was a show that, you know, very limited because of pandemic restrictions and that. Uh, but towards the end, um, you, we were allowed to be in spaces is what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say. It was the, a, a bit at the end where we're allowed to be in spaces together, but not many people wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted me to do a workshop. And I, I, until that point, I've been playing with the idea of workshops because it's a great way of getting out there and meeting people and share your knowledge. So I liked the idea, but I didn't know what. And I guess they prompted in me that, okay, maybe I can do it. So I, I came out with this idea of abstract art where with inks you can really create an abstract composition and I walk you through a small process. It's an hour, an hour and a half and it's a lot of fun. So I discovered that workshop and I started giving it every other month in wineries. Um, and parallel, then this is how life works sometimes. It's not, some things are not planned. Mm -hmm. Parallel, Melissa started giving workshops with clay in her house so we are both starting to give workshops here and there and we just joke around and say oh maybe one day we can have a studio where we can give our workshops because mm -hmm. when you're having to go to hotels and and places you have to carry everything it's a lot of work but that's what we had mm -hmm. um so and at the same time i i was looking for a new studio because mm -hmm. my little garage the south the house was being sold so i needed to get out of there so it's like this is we need to find a space together and eventually we found a barn where the first floor had a little room a bathroom and a little kitchen and upstairs had a big space so we each took a half of the upstairs that could be our studios mm -hmm. and below we could give our workshops mm -hmm. so that was january 20 last year 2023 and we decided to call it veme because Mel verona and melissa together we did their various sessions to come out with a name <laughs> so <laughs> we hope it's a good name um but the idea is Veme Studios because our studios are up up there. So okay. it made sense that you come to our workshops, but you also come and check out our studios and kind of that um, idea that you can get into the world's life, uh, mm. the artist life, right? Like see how they work. And we are very, we, we are very different in different ways, Melissa and I, but at the mm -hmm. same, just by being together all 
so much, we we kind of like think the same thing at the same time, which right. is fun because I'm, she will be like, Verona, I've been thinking of this. And I'm like, I've been thinking the same thing. So it's kind of like uh-huh. we both collect ideas simultaneously and it's very exciting to see her point of view and my point of view and we marry it together. Um, but our differences also, I think, that make it rich. So Ben Studio was born in that barn. We started giving workshops. We started uh, bringing community together. We we have a group called Cartel, where it's no cost to anyone. And you can go to our website to know more, but you we come together twice a month to talk about creative ideas and other things. And that started there. Um, and Melissa was walking town and saw the space where we're now in front of the Norfolk um, uh, art center now it's it, it was vacant and it said oh. open in september so she's like it's open let's go check it out so we went to see it without kind of like let's just go see it mm-hmm. because we had a space that we liked and we were happy but it also had you know it's far away it's a, it's a, it's a different thing than what it's now um and we went and we walked in that space and we i think we both felt that, that it this was the space and mm-hmm. that we needed to do the move. It was a big decision because we were happy in the barn. So why, where are you going to leave something that's working? Mm-hmm. But this was more of, this is our chance to try something new, expand. So it wasn't planned. It was more like the space came about. And from there, we geared ourselves. We prepared all uh, June, July, because we found out in June, so June, July, to open in 1st of August. So we gather all our efforts every day, trying to source tables the best way we can. Um, And that we decided that the front would be a little bit of a shop where we can sell our goods, but also other creators and curate a little bit of a, I like to say like a artist lifestyle. So there's Mm. a little bit of clothing too, all the pottery Melissa makes, paintings I make and books and things like that. Um, but also a, co- a, a, a concept that you can come anytime we're open and create. That's something we didn't have in the barn. We have thought about it, but we're like, how are we going to... We just didn't have the space and mm-hmm. the resources there. But having this bigger space, we really put ourselves together and put a menu of... The, this is the good thing about having two different artists. Like she offers all the pottery and she has all the pottery knowledge and I have all the painting knowledge. So the first two mediums that we wanted to offer it's pottery and painting. And from there it grew. Melissa brought uh, painting pottery. We brought watercolor sketch. And actually this spring we're introducing a few other items that are exciting. Um, so it's about offering different mediums and people can come anytime we're open and create. And it's been great. People, you know, it's a new concept, so you have to explain it to them. But I think (laughs) once they get it, they understand. And it's so fun to see people that never painted in their life. They create a painting or someone that have been trying to try pottery forever and they finally can do it. And uh, it serves the, the North Fork and you know beyond the Norfolk because people from the farther in the island come to see us uh, a space where they can explore their creativity and how does it work with people just when you're open people can come in is it it's not by appointment no you can just come in yeah okay yeah it's we call it art bar so think of a bar you walk in obviously bars are open at a certain time but uh, you walk in and ask for a beer. It's the same thing. You walk mm-hmm. in, you, wa- you you come with your family. You can each do different mediums. So let's say your cousin wants to do pottery. You want to do painting and the other one wants to do sketch. You can each do whatever you want. We mm-hmm. give you a box or a kit with all the materials and you're on your own. <laughs> so <laughs> we're not teaching you. There's a lot of books that uh, can guide you through it. If there's if the, some some days we only have time to give you a thing and we have to you know take care of all the guests but if there's a few people we always engage and and you know if you have a questions mm-hmm. we help you out so we won't abandon you if you have questions but i think people thrive in the sense that they can 
give that freedom of just explore and play mm. and it's not only about creating it's about being together and mm. one of our sentences we have it in the studio is create together because just coming together and, and do an activity other than drinking and eating which i have nothing against but that seems to be the social encounter all the time oh let's mm -hmm. meet for dinner let's meet for coffee and that's great but how about we meet and and create, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it, it lets you talk, it lets you chat, people laugh, they they tell each other stories. We also have tea and coffee self-serve so people can have their nice tea and, and create and, and it's great. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, you should uh, come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then now uh, to talk about, there's a, I think the exhibition coming up at the library, I yes. think it's, uh, March twenty second. March twenty second. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there, yeah, there's an exhibition coming up called Heritage and Home: Latin American Artists of the East End, and that was a project that um, our curator Sally Grant is putting together. But I was just curious how maybe how Sally came to you or how you got involved. Yeah. In um, the exhibition. So I met Sally. A few, I guess when she started her position here, um, it was kind of end pandemic, I guess. And she was creating the first show she made. I guess she asked around for artist information. And as I mentioned, she came to my studio and we connected very quickly in the sense that um, I don't know. Some people connect quickly, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> yeah. really like her. She's really nice. I, uh, but I, I couldn't stop talking about all my stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the painted, I was painting my first series of photos on canvases. So I was telling her about that. I was telling her about my painting Black Lives Matter, everything I was working on. And as I mentioned, I was working in different type of medium. So I was like mm -hmm. feeling her in and all these things. And we connected and it happens to be that she lives in my same street here in Greenport. Oh. So after we see, I saw her in my studio, I run into her on the street and say, ah, you know. Um, so I participated in that first show um, and and I, every every show after that I've come, I haven't, I've missed a few unfortunately, but I've come to see other shows she creates and I really like the way she does it because there's a sense of unity that it's very beautiful and i'm not a creator so i don't know it must be a gift but it, the way she creates things it's beyond how, how how can i express the beauty and she uses the space that you have here in a very nice way and i really like it so for this she told me that she was doing um latin american artist and i'm from latin america so she said if i wanted to participate uh, I can't remember how she chose, but um, I guess she told me the theme, heritage, and I was just painting the photos, the old photos of my grandma, my mother, my two grandmas and my mother. Mm -hmm. And I, pen I painted them before last Christmas. And my idea was to send them to my nieces and siblings as um, a photo of you know, my grandma and my mother, a few of my mother I painted, um, kind of like, it's kind of like a lock am amulet or like mm. a saint card. I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but mm -hmm. in, I think Catholicism, there's these cards with the saints and my, my family is Catholic. I'm not, but I grew up seeing it, the little cards of the saints and they would have them on their mirror or whatever and mm -hmm. it's kind of like the saint is protecting me and these prayers and stuff but so for me instead of having a saint i want to honor my grandma and mm -hmm. my mother so i painted these photos i sent a message on the back saying you know keep this photo for to protect you and bring you luck and i send them to my nieces you know who's starting their life and my siblings too you know uh so it was kind of a gesture of um honoring these women that came before us. So I mentioned that to Sally. I'm like, this is actually w what I've been working when she connected to me and related to the theme. So she said, that's great. So for the show, I'm that's one of the photos I 
put it in a big poster and I mm -hmm. painted it. You're going to see it. It's huge. Um, but it's, now it's beyond the saint. I was thinking now that it's a giant poster, it's kind of like idealizing, like mm. an idol instead of, you know, how rock stars and singers, people have their big posters or used to, I guess. So this is the way of saying, okay, you can idolize your own mother or your own family, because even though they're human and not everyone's perfect, I'm sure we can all know, we can all see how we could have done things differently looking back they had their own path and they they brought us up and in my particular experience my mother gave gave a lot to everyone so i want to honor her in this big way mm. yeah and as you have how many work so the original photos i painted i sent out to my family so those were small format they're like um four by six or you know they're small photographs and for this show it's going to be just one just one, one big, big one. one yeah i had we talked to sally about having maybe three my my two grandmas and my mother three smaller ones but then she showed me where she wanted to hang and it made more sense to have a, one big one um and you know i like it so yes. <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind to have one piece only it's fine that's her yes yeah and then i guess separate from that do you have any other shows or exhibits coming up in the future? So right uh, at Veme, because we, we, we've been concentrating on, you know, opening the studio and making the experience best as possible as at the same time being open. So it's Melissa mm -hmm. and I who are there all the time. We also teach workshops that you can sign in. We also have guest artists. So, but now that we have a little bit of downtime, um, we think it could be nice to do a group show inviting a few artist friends. So that might happen in the spring. And I cannot tell you many details because it's not out in the world. So mm -hmm. if it doesn't happen, I don't want to be <laughs> yeah. saying lies. Uh, but the idea is it's celebrating these artists, but also inspiring other people. Mm -hmm. When people come to the studio right now, I have my paintings, but they look at the books and I think it would be very inspiring to see other artists work, different perspectives, different views. Um, I get inspired. I love when I see other artists. So I think people would get um, a benefit from that. That's the one I'm working on. Um, that's That would be the next one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess for the, actually I had one, maybe one other one with the art before I get to just Greenport. Um, sure. Just kind of as an artist, what have you enjoyed the most about your journey? And because you said, or, or I mean, a working artist, mm -hmm. you say you're a working artist, but I guess how has it been and what have you enjoyed the most about your journey so far, even from in Costa Rica, where you kind of discovered that painting more and then going to Italy and Miami, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. um, just kind of your journey and what you've enjoyed the most through your career. Uh, for me, it goes to the, the basics, uh, painting. So the act of painting, it's what brings me the joy. Um, you know, I, 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 as you asked me, that, I, I go back and I'm like, what was the thing that brought me joy? It was finishing a painting, the process of painting it and then finishing and surprising myself, you know, and like, and, and wow, I did that. And it's just, it, it just keeps surprising me and it keeps exciting me, the possibilities of trying something new. Um, even though I'm always painting, I'm trying different mediums. I'm trying, you know, pigments and um watercolors i tried inks for a while so it's um the thread that keeps happening it's the same and it, it goes mm -hmm. back to basic to painting and i think that's something that every artist when you're going through hard times sometimes you have to stop sometimes you know you're not flowing very well it, just go back to the practice to you know painting it doesn't matter if it's a finished work or, or great or bad just doing the act it's what it fulfills me mm. the most and obviously there's a excitement around it but um that's mainly the the height because 
once you show the painting and other people respond to it, that's great. When, you know, when someone wants to purchase a piece of work, it's kind of like, wow, really? You want my work in your house? It never gets old. <laughs> so, but it's a different, it's, it's more like, it's kind of like the connection with society, but what happens internally with your own self, it's kind of like a reflection time, meditation time, and just like life itself happening in, in that moment when you're painting or creating. Mm -hmm. And in just in general for, um, you've been on the North Fork for a while now, since 2004, 16. 16. Yeah. You mentioned about some of the things you've enjoyed with nature and the community, but were there any, any other things you enjoy about living on the North Fork in Greenport and kind of what do you hope for the future of Greenport and the community? Oh, I love that question. Um, I think nature it was the first hook mm -hmm. because... As I mentioned, I lived in Kotchuk that year and I lived in an area, Nassau Point, where all the houses are kind of more in. Mm -hmm. So you walk around in these huge trees that mm -hmm. embellish the the, the, wa the roads and then the, the beach is right there. So I really connected with nature right away. Um, and that's just a hook. I, I when it's my th when I have a little time off, I go with my daughter to the sound and we walk through the rocks. So that always brings me back to being grateful of being alive and being here, and having that a bit that access is so wonderful. And I think that nature and the surroundings have an effect on everyone. Mm -hmm. And that sense that that essence that nature is inflicting in all of us we all have it in, in certain degree and that's what unites us all. So there's a sense of respect to each other. I really like that. You know, my my uh, my culture in Nicaragua is very different. Um, so that has been something that I'm always um, learning. It's, you know, here people are more reserved, more respectful, but I'm in nature like more like that. I'm more introvert in my country. Everyone's more like, ah, I'm more loud in that. So, um, but still it's a change. And that's what um, kind of like, I, I can see how it unifies everything together. Mm -hmm. And what excites me most about where the town is going, I think it's already happening with the space, with, with Veme, we've been open for it's going to be six months now i no maybe eight months i don't know i lose count now <laughs> but um we meet so much so many people people that i've never met in these eight years they are like oh i'm from here i'm from there or people that just moved in here i really like to know there's new families coming in here making the north fork their new home and i'm not a local i'm not from here you know i i um, but I think it's a sense of welcoming everyone that wants to honor this space, um, that wants to bring their their energy, their life, you know, bringing their kids to a new region. It's always, for me, I see it in a very uh, respectful and honorable way to, to spread our arms and, and, and make space for whoever wants to if someone wants to live here, it's because they want to honor this, this space, hopefully. And we we can create bridges and work together. I I love what we brought to the town with Veme. I think it's exciting. The Norfolk um, Art Center opening in front of us. It's going to be so much fun, all the things that are happening. So there's going to be, I think, a lot of culture and moving parts. And it's up to us, the ones who live here, locals and you know people visiting to embrace and celebrate all these efforts that are being done because it is our dedication you know melissa and i are putting ourselves out there to make this happen but for uh for everyone to enjoy as well so mm. i think the future it's happening now for me and i mm -hmm. want to see it just see where it's gonna go and it's exciting and also being part of this show it's exciting there's some artists that I don't know that are Latin American that I don't know. So I'm always being surprised. I'm always getting introduced to new people. And that's very enriching for me. Definitely. And then just, is there anything else you'd like to discuss or say that 
you have we haven't talked about um just thank you to the library and sally for creating this show i think it's very important that we celebrate latin american communities because there's a large community here in the north fork and sometimes and i may i might be biased but i think they're kind of more silent there's many reasons people are afraid some people are not legal or they're afraid to be perceived as anything i don't know mm -hmm. um for me it's a little different because i i even though i'm immigrant i i never feel i'm i i always you know i i, I know my space but i feel like it's nice to celebrate and create these safe spaces where we celebrate color and we celebrate this culture that is so rich that if it's coming here for different circumstances in history, people have come to in the United States and brought their culture, right? I feel like Long Island in particular, um, New York. Um, I, I know so many people that come from Italy background, right? And that's why we have pizza and pasta and we have all this richness of different cultures that make mm -hmm the place that we're living what it is so why not welcome this new culture that's coming latin america that has so much to offer and what can we learn from them you know what mm -hmm. can they how can they enrich our lives and i can assure you it's going to be colorful and joyful and give a, a give you a sense of a perspective that's very um exciting wonderful so i want to thank you so much for coming on to the Floyd Memorial Library podcast and thank you for telling your story and I really enjoyed talking to you and learning about your art and definitely come out to the art show March 22nd for the Heritage and Home Latin American Artists of the East End at 6 p.m. Correct yes <laughs> we'll be here yes thank you so much for having me it's a pleasure and I love everything that uh, library does. I've been coming here with my daughter. This was one of the only places that I could come with her um, to do the toddler time and that's the way I met some of my friends now. So it's a great resource for the community and I'm one of the benefits from it. I'm one of the people that have benefit from all the resources that you give so I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed episode 20 with Verona Penalba. I want to thank you for listening to the Floyd Memorial Library podcast, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.